My next guest, 12-year-old Njabolo Zulu, has been mocked most of her life for being too dark. At one point, she had to leave school after fellow pupils started calling her black like a shoe polish. Zulu hasn't let this get her down, though. This young lady has started an anti-bullying campaign. She's a radio presenter and a junior preacher at her church. Well, she joins us this morning with her mom, Duduzile, to tell us about this painful but incredible journey as well. Ladies, good morning. And welcome to Morning News Today. Thanks for your time this morning. And Jabula, you're so busy. So I'm very honored that you made the time to come and be with us. So let's start with talking about your experience and being bullied at school. Very quickly, just, you know, what happened? Who was doing what to you? Well, when I was in grade one, I was bullied. In grade two, I was bullied. In grade three, I was bullied. In grade four, I was bullied. And also in grade five. Mm -hmm. So from grade one to grade four, I was bullied about my dark skin color. Mm -hmm. They told me that I'm black and I look like a shoe polish. Because they told me that I do not belong in the school because I'm black. Mm -hmm. But eventually, something has changed. In grade five, they bullied me about my hair. Mm. They wanted to know why was my hair different from their hair. And these are little, were they little girls, little boys, or a combination? Boys, only boys. Only boys did that. And how did that make you feel? It made me feel that I'm not wanted. It made me feel that like I'm disrespected because everybody has the right to be respected. Then I felt that my right was being violated. And I thought that I was not loved and I was worthless. Mm. And then what happened to change that for, for you to take this and turn it into a positive experience for you? What, at, at, at what point did you decide, okay, I'm not going to feel bad about this, I'm going to take it and do something good with this? My mom told me that I am beautiful. Of course. But are. I did not mm. believe her, but people kept on telling me that I'm beautiful. And I started believing myself that, yes, I am beautiful. And then I started, that's when I started an anti-bullying campaign that I do not want any kid to go through what I went through. Mm. So I decided to become a motivational speaker and start an anti-bullying campaign at the same time. Well, let's hear from mom and how she helped you get through this, uh, Duduzile. And I can see it, it, it makes you still sad. As a mom, I can just imagine what you must have felt when you heard your little girl come home and tell you this is what she was going through. How did you help her through that? Mm, I, I help her... Uh by, I, I told her that uh, she was beautiful and she doesn't have to listen to what other people are saying about her. And I also tried to check on some uh, organization that deals with teens. Luckily, I met uh, Miss K. Ngeletzeng. She runs an MB, MB Lifestyle. Mm. It's an organization dealing with teens. So uh, through her programs, uh, she managed to gain her self-confidence. Mm. Yes. And then moving on to start this anti-bullying campaign and be a preacher. The first preacher in the family, I believe. Yes, yes. And yes. how does that make you feel to see you know, your, your little girl choosing not to be a victim? Yeah, it, it makes me feel so proud because... Uh, yeah, it's been uh, tough for her, yeah, being bullied, but when she d decided uh, and said to me that, Mommy, I, I just want to uh, start uh, talking about this bullying. Mm -hmm. I just want to stand in front of people and tell them uh, that bullying is a bad thing. So, yeah, that's when she went to the principal, talked to the principal at her school. That's where she started. Then the principal allowed her, gave her that platform, and that's when I went to other schools also, to ask them to allow her to come and yeah, give the motivation to talk about the bullying. Yeah. So Njibula, I believe that since you started your anti-bullying campaign, you've actually helped those who were bullying you. Tell us about what happened there. How did that happen? Well, those people who were bullying me, they came to me and they wanted to be my friends. Well, I accepted them to be my friends, but I did not hang out with them. Mm. So they came to me, they told me that they really need my help. I asked them, what kind of help do you need? Mm. They told me that they wanted to stop bullying because now they could see that bullying was wrong. And I advised them into the right way and I told my mom. Them? Like I told them that you know what, bullying is the wrong thing because bullying is one of the devil's way. When you bully someone, you do not know what that person is going through. You should never bully one another because bullying, it is really a bad thing. Mm. And like, 
when I told them that I believed that I was able to change somebody's life from being a bully into something positive. Mm. Are you still at the same school? Have you left that school and moved on to another one? I have moved from that school. Okay. And, and, and what are the stories that you're hearing from other uh, little kids, other than those who, who came to you for help? But other little children, I mean, what are, what are the stories that they are telling you about what they are going through? And how do you, how do you decide what you're going to say to them? Like, um, they're telling me about their family problems, like okay. what's happening in their family, that maybe like they are being abused. And sometimes I, I just think for a moment. I do not answer, but I think for a moment. And I'm like, okay, let me, let me talk to my mom. And then when I tell my mom, she's like, Okay, you tell them like this, like this, because sometimes I am not an expert. Yes. So she's like, sometimes she doesn't tell me what the kids have told her to tell me because she feels like it is going to hurt me and it is going to affect me on my schoolwork. Yeah, and that was my next question for you, Dudazila. It's just to, you're obviously always cautious as to, you know, she's still young. Mm. She, you know, she shouldn't mm. be, mm. you know, have, having to be burdened in a way mm. with so much of, you know, mm. everything else that's going on in everybody else's mm. life. So how do you make sure she keeps that balance, being a young girl, mm. but being the wise soul that she yeah. is, of course, as well? Yeah, sometimes when she, she comes w f back from school and tell, tells me that uh, this is what happened, somebody said this and this, and when I feel this is too big, uh, even for me that I can't even uh, take. I speak to the principal and to the teachers to uh, address this issue and make a follow up on this issue. And since they, they, they saw her on TV last, uh, or on her interview, so she's been getting more inboxes, yeah, and I, I sometimes I go through those uh, yeah. messages. So you go through yeah, them first? Yeah, yeah, okay. through them first, and I check and check, and those I feel that, no, this one is too much for her. I, I can handle this one on my own mm -hmm. rather than her being exposed to such uh, information because, yeah, I, I didn't realize that uh, so many kids are going through uh, so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, well, Njibulu, I want to know your. You're a motivational speaker. You run this anti-bullying campaign. You're a radio presenter. You're preaching there, and you're a junior preacher as well. So, where do you find time for you, or is that all you need? Does that just fill you up and make you happy, or do you also just need time to play? Well, like I believe whatever that I do, I'm playing because, like, when I preach, like I feel like I haven't preached enough. When I'm a motiv when I motivate people, I feel like I haven't motivated them enough. Well. I'm a violin player, so I you're can... You're a violin player as well, yes. on top of all of that. Goodness, yes. okay, you're just a top achiever, aren't you? So, yeah. so like, when, um, when they, all the kids tell me their stories, I just play my violin to free my soul. Mm -hmm. So, like, is yeah. this Is this what you feel you want to do for the rest of your life, all this motivational speaking, this preaching? Do you think that that's what you want to do? And yes, I want to mm -hmm. do it for a lifetime. Okay, and you believe you can help as many people as possible. Yes, I well, can. You're an incredible young lady. I wish I was... If I want to be you when I grow up. That's mm -hmm. what I want to be. Thank you very much, and good luck. And I look forward to seeing you out there. I'm sure you're destined for big, big, big things. Thank and Jabula Zulu and her mom, Dudazile, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.